I'm gonna stop Aka Beach. I'm gonna get out of your way. No, make you make me funny. We gonna do it to a uh Hi. Welcome back. I do a lot of baking on my Instagram and every time without fail people always want to know the recipes of the things that I make. So I did a little poll between my pistachio cake and the carrot and lemon cake and the carrot and lemon cake won, which is expected everybody loves a good carrot cake. So today I'm here to show you how to make that. I also did another poll asking if people would prefer this video to be on YouTube or on Instagram TV and you all said Instagram TV. As we're here you'll see that I did not end up going for that, not because I'm ignoring you but because I'm so old. I'm a grandmother. I'm a grandmother. I don't understand IGTV. The thing is, it's a carrot cake, it's got carrots in it. It's effectively a salad. Where are you my salad? And also on top of that, it's vegan. So, I mean, it's got no calories in it. Like literally zero calorie carrot cake. So it is inspired by a recipe in this book, but I do change it up a little bit. First off, what we need to do is we need to make our egg replacement. Also, I'm doubling this recipe, but I'll just tell you the normal ingredients for it. You need to make the equivalent of two flax eggs, which will require two tablespoons of ground flaxseed and six tablespoons of warm water. We'll just add that to that. Give it a quick stir. And then you put that in the fridge for about 15 minutes just to like it goes like gloopy, like the same texture as like egg white. We don't talk about the state of my fridge. This is not my house and it's messy and I hate it and it directly affects my mental health. In our big bowl that is already the star of the show. 300 grams of self-raising flour. Our sugar. This looks like a lot obviously because I've doubled this. So this is about 200 grams. Oh, well, that's 400 grams. I'm going to stop explaining that because you get it. Big cook, little cook. Welcome to our cafe. We're going to put in about three teaspoons of mixed spice. Tight. And we'll also need about three teaspoons of baking soda. I mean baking powder. One, two, three. Okay, before we do anything else, we need to prepare our carrots. Just because our flax eggs need more time. We love a multitasker. Unfortunately, all I have is this pathetic little whisk. <laughs> You'll need about 150 grams of grated carrot. This is going to be a struggle for me. A lot of you who follow me on Instagram know that my elbows are being a source of great pain because of a bad arm day workout. So here we go. <laughs> <laughs> not monetizable. This is not monetizable. It's not yeah. monetizable. <laughs> oh my god, the tennis elbow is real. I really do be feeling like Big Cook, Little Cook right now. I was about to say I don't know which one I would be, but let's be real, I'm Big Cook. We've got all of our carrot in here. Before we're going to need to use that, we need to combine our wet ingredients, which is our flax egg. And then in here, I've got equal parts plant milk and oil. You can see it's separated. It's really gross. Um, so you'll need 150 mils of each. I've obviously got 300 of each because I'm doubling. I need to stop saying that because we fucking get it. The flax into the milky, big milky. I should have used a bigger bowl. Yep, need a bigger bowl. Just mix it round a wee bit. So yeah, basically just mix that until it looks like a embodiment of all your nightmares. Now we're gonna combine our wet and dry. You don't need to do anything fancy with it. I just pour it all into the bowl and then just mix it with a wooden spoon until it's just combined. Now to that, we add our shredded carrots. Give it a wee mix. And this is the point where you would add like raisins or currants or whatever. If you were to add raisins, I would probably add like 100 grams. So that is literally it for the batter. You're welcome, it's amazing. As far as like baking the cakes, this recipe for me tends to make two loaves and then a couple of muffins. So I've got two loaf tins here, 
lined with some really fancy liner cases that I think I got from Lakeland a couple of years ago. For my little muffins, I get a muffin tin such as this, and a little bit of greaseproof paper, and then we do a little bit of origami. This is like so, so extra to go. I could just buy muffin cases, but we're in a pandemic right now. We gotta do some arts and crafts to stay sane. You get like a small kind of tub that's gonna fit into your muffin cases. So then what you do, you pop one of these over one of these. You take this and you just force it in there. Then you just gotta fine tune it until it looks pretty. Just like pull up the edges and then wherever you see like a fold like here, you sort of get it proper folded, nice and crisp. And there you have it. One cupcake or muffin case. First of all, so that I know how many muffins I'm gonna make, I'm going to deposit the cake into the loaf tins. So this is a, you can see, it's really, really thick. Girl, you're thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. You just gotta have good upper body strength, which, some of us have got more of than others. Oh no. It tastes good. It's fine, it's got no calories. I filled them up about that much. Don't know if you can even really see that. Shake them about a bit. Give them a tap to get rid of any bubbles. I'm gonna just pour this into my homemade muffin case. Yep, from, from a great height. And I'll just make one more muffin case. Oh, too much. Oh, it's gonna be a big fat muffin. Now our muffins are gonna be massive. You dirty pig! We've got our oven on 170 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, and we're gonna bake them for until they are baked. It's different every time. My oven is prehistoric. Set that timer for 35 minutes because that's when I'm going to come back and check on it. It'll probably not be done. Now I'm going to get tidying up and I'll see you when they're out of the oven. I feel like there is not enough comedy opportunity in this video, so if you subscribed for that, I'm so sorry. Okay, we've got like a minute left on the timer, but I just took a peek at them and they look like they might be done, so I'm going to do the old skewer trick. Upon closer inspection, I think that they could do with an extra five minutes out. That is hot. For the record, the muffins have come out after about 40 minutes and the cakes will probably come out after about 45 or 50. Um, again, it changes every time because my oven is a bastard. We're gonna leave them to set inside the tin for five or ten minutes and then we'll take them out and put them on our cooling rack. We got all of our things out of the oven. These are now out of the these are now out of the tin and the loaves are still in the tin to set a little bit but I thought we would just get started on the icing now. The icing is just sort of something that I kind of just wing every time but I'm gonna give you the general gist of what I do. The icing is where we incorporate the lemon flavour, which goes incredibly with the like cinnamony, nutmeggy flavour of the carrot cake. So we've got the zest of like one large lemon. Well, that all went in. <laughs> We're gonna need the juice of said lemon. We've got this fancy looking. This is not monetizable. Into the same bowl. Don't even care. I've got the soggy zest. This calls for two hundred grams of icing sugar. I'm just gonna put in whatever I want because they're not my real bag. I think this recipe can contain me and a little bit of soy milk as well, just to loosen it up. That was way too much soy milk. Fuck it. This process is essentially just me adding in different things until I get the right consistency. If I accidentally put in too much milk or lemon juice, then I just put in more sugar until it looks nice. Until I think. I'm bored now. I'm pretty much there with the colour that I want. I wanted like a pale yellow, almost white. However, the texture is a little bit too thick. So instead of adding more soy milk, I'm just gonna add the other half of the lemon juice. 
Oh, got a pip in there. It's fine, it's just extra protein or something. Don't really matter, it's no calories. Just to loosen it. Oh, yeah. Lahmar! <laughs> okay, so now we've got like a thick but still spreadable frosting. So now we basically just got to wait for these puppies to cool down enough for me to frost them. And we're also just going to take the loaves out of the tins. I've brought you down a little bit just so you can hopefully see at least a little bit of what's going on down here. Icing, cakes. For the topping, I'm going to use walnuts. You can get those little like fondant uh, carrots, but I can't be asked. Put some walnuts on a plate and I'm just going to take my ring off first and crush them in my hands, my bare hands. I like doing it this way because it makes me feel strong and powerful. I feel like I'm the Thanos of walnuts. I'm never going to get the feeling back again of watching Endgame for the first time. But then I watched it for the second time and I still felt like I was going to cry and have an asthma attack and also have an orgasm at the same time. Maybe it's one of those films that you can just watch and every time you're like, <laughs> Okay, so I'm not wanting them to get like completely dusty. I still want like maybe even still some like whole whole halves. I just basically want them to be like irregular shapes and sizes. This is what I'm now working with. So let's start off with the loaves. Just because this has been in the fridge, I just need to loosen it up by stirring it. And then I'm gonna take probably, I reckon that two tablespoons will do this. I don't want it to be like, a really uniform coat. I kind of, I don't know if you've been able to tell, but I kind of like the rustic vibe of home baking. I like it when it looks homemade, which is good because I have no creative skills. And then I just, I'm going to take a small handful of this and just haphazardly just try and get it as uneven and Devil May Care looking as possible. I was always gonna do that. That was always gonna happen. We're in the kitchen, I'm always gonna salt bay it, you know? This is our final cake. For the muffins, I just kind of try and keep, like I get a tablespoon of this and I just sort of dollop it on the top and allow it to kind of go wherever it wants to go. And then it will just kind of start to droop over the sides in a nice natural way. Some people like less icing, some people like more icing. The fact is, it's icing. If you don't want the icing, then you can lick it off. But just know that if you are against having icing on your cakes, then I'm judging you for it. For the cupcakes or muffins, I try and get like one full walnut half, which makes no sense whatsoever, just mathematically. But I'm going to get a walnut half, pop it on the top and then surround it with crumbles crumble crumble and there we go beautiful so that's the finished result um it's really like for a carrot cake it is very very moist um which is obviously everybody's complaint about carrot cake is that it's too dry i feel like with vegan carrot cake it's the addition of the flax egg as opposed to normal egg because obviously normal egg acts as like a cement and it can get really dry if you accidentally overbake it i think the absence of a real egg sort of makes it not dry out as much as a regular carrot cake now we're done there's literally nothing else to say this has been cooking with me once again you are so welcome and i'm sorry that this was boring peace